This tutorial is going to look at two distinct approaches to applying base color to renderings in Photoshop. One approach is going to use the paint bucket tool, and the other approach is going to use the solid color fill adjustment layer. We'll start with the simplest approach, which is using the paint bucket tool. Our first step is going to be to create a new layer. We'll click on our new layer icon and rename that layer after the layer of color that we're going to put in this drawing, in this case the grass layer. We'll then want to turn off some of the layers that overlap our ground plane. So we don't have to click as many times in between the trees uh, to fill an entire area of grass. To do that, we'll turn off our trees layers and also our textures layer. We use our paint bucket tool, which the shortcut is G, or we'll look over in our toolbar here, and it's this icon. Now the paint bucket tool is actually underneath the gradient tool, so if you're showing the gradient tool, you'll need to click and hold on the icon and select the paint bucket tool here. You'll see that the paint bucket tool is going to fill with a foreground color, our mode is normal, opacity to 100, and our tolerance is set to 32. And we'll want to make sure that all layers is checked right here. And we'll change our foreground color from black to a color closer to what we want to use, which is this green color right here since we're doing grass. And if we have all layers checked, it will respond to the layers that are showing. If you have this unchecked and you click, it will actually just fill the entire layer because there's nothing on this grass layer. So we'll undo that here and recheck all layers. We can continue to paint in some of this base color. Now we can continue to do this for the entirety of the drawing. There are some instances up here where we don't have line work that actually encloses our grass layer. And if we were to click here, it would just bleed out and cover the majority of our drawing right here. So we'll undo that. The process in this particular case is to create a new layer. We'll call it a temp layer. and then we'll grab a brush. We'll use this brush to paint in temporarily by clicking and holding shift. We'll cover or create a closed in portion right here. We can come back to our paint layer or our grass layer and paint bucket in this area. When we're done, and we might do this in multiple cases all around our drawing, we'll simply delete the temp layer and we'll have our closed in grass right here. What might happen often is that uh, you choose to paint in this grass layer, and then after a while you decide that you actually want to use a different color for all of this grass in here. And it might seem like you need to change the color, choose a slightly lighter color, maybe a little oranger. And it might seem like you need to continue to click on this grass right here. That's actually not the case. Because we've got all of this grass isolated on its own layer, we can actually control click the layer icon to put a marquee around all of the pixels on that particular layer. We'll then on a Mac hit option and delete to fill with a foreground color. We'll hold down option and just tap delete. On a PC that would be alt and backspace to fill in with that foreground color. And you can see that you can continue to choose different color options holding Alt and Delete to fill the entirety of that layer with that new color in the foreground. For different materials, we'll want to create them on a different layer. So for planting beds, we would want to create a new layer for that. And for sidewalks, we'd want to create a new layer for that. For buildings and water and paving, and all the different types of materials we might have in our site plan, we want to create unique layers for each of those materials. Now a more advanced way to apply base color to rendering is through the solid color fill adjustment layer. We'll demonstrate that here. We'll deselect our current selection and grab our wand to select a different area. In this case, we're going to select the buildings. Hold down shift to select multiple buildings in this case. We'll go to our solid color fill adjustment layer by clicking on the create new adjustment layer and solid color. It brings up this dialog and it allows us to choose different colors for these particular buildings. And as you notice, it changes in the drawing in real time as you're selecting the color. This is one of the distinct advantages of this approach, is it allows you to see what that color looks like immediately as opposed to selecting that color and then filling with the foreground color as we did in the previous approach. Because in this case, we'll choose this here. What you'll notice is that it has this solid color fill icon right here, which is the color that we choose uh, for our buildings in this case. What it also has is a layer mask right here. And this layer mask is actually what determines where the color goes. We'll create another temp layer so that we can add color to this building up here using the adjustment layer. I'll create this temp layer, grab my brush, 
and create that line. I'll then come back to the adjustment layer. And you'll notice when you click on the adjustment layer, we go from this green and white when I'm on my temp layer to when I click on the layer mask, it changes to black and white. And that's because layer masks only deal in this monochromatic black and white range. If, as you can see through the thumbnail, anywhere where there is white in the layer mask is where there is full color in the drawing. So if I were to paint bucket with white on this layer, it will show up as this gray color. I'll demonstrate that here. We'll hit G for paint bucket. I'm painting with a white onto the layer mask icon. As I click here, it fills with that gray color. I can hold Option and click on the layer mask to actually see what this looks like in the layer mask mode and then I'll hold option again to unclick to get back to this view. Where this might be the biggest advantage is when you have a drawing that's already completed and you still want to fine tune and tweak the colors at the end. We'll check that out here. In this case I have a rendering that's close to completed and what we'll do is we want to fine tune the shrub colors right here. Maybe we want to make it a little darker so we'll click on this icon and I can continue to play with the colors and see how they are changing in the rendering in real time. Now more than just being able to change the colors and see them in real time, using the solid fill color adjustment layer allows you to modify your line work much easier, especially if you've added a bunch of blending options or opacity changes to your layers. We'll demonstrate that right here. In this case, I have a shrubs layer right here that is a solid color fill adjustment layer. Now more than just the solid color, we have a series of effects uh, or blending options that are on. We've got a pattern overlay, which applies a pattern on top of this solid color. We also have an inner glow and a bevel and emboss that gives it some depth. Now if I had just used the paint bucket, I would actually have to turn all these effects off and bump the opacity back up to 100, maybe even change the layer mode from multiply back to normal so that I could sample that original green color that's the foundation for all of the shrubs right here. In this case, because it's a solid fill adjustment layer, I can simply click on the mask and begin to paint with white to add in areas to this layer that are the same base color and reflect all the same effects that are on that layer. I'll do that here by grabbing a brush and filling in these areas right here. You'll notice that it fills in not just the color but also all of the effects because we're coloring in on the layer mask right here. Now the paint bucket tool is the best approach for beginners. It's the simplest, it's the easiest to understand, and it can get the job done for most all of your rendering purposes. But as you get more comfortable with Photoshop, you might find that the solid color fill adjustment layer is a better route, especially in those later stages when you want to refine and tweak the final colors and adjustments towards the end of that project.